This is uh, Sean Patrick Kelly, and here is my uh, Fantasia 2023 interview with uh, writer-director Paris Sarchilla about his debut film, Raging Grace. So uh, we uh, talk about the film and its themes of uh, immigrant labor, so I uh, hope you enjoy. Okay, so I'll start by asking him, how did you first get the idea for Raging Grace? Yes, sure. Yeah, straight to it. I yeah. love it. Um, uh, well, I think um, it was basically, I wrote it during 2020. Mm -hmm. And um, it really kind of came at a time when, um, God, I, I was looking inward, you know, as many of us were during the pandemic, finding out who the hell I am. And, um, and it was also culminated with, you know, a lot of Asian hate going on mm -hmm. in both the US and the UK. And I was so pissed. I was, truly, I, I was kind of dealing with a rage that I hadn't really before. And um, I felt like I needed to put it on the page. And um, yeah, it birthed Raging Grace. You know, we, I think um, after the incredible film, uh, uh, Get Out, mm -hmm. I really wanted, um, you know, the kind of cathartic spectacle that black audiences had with Get Out um, for East and Southeast Asian audiences for Raging Grace. So I set the bar pretty high, but um, I knew I wanted to make something that gave us permission to feel angry and rageful, but also, um, you know, importantly, to be able uh, to feel entertained, but to be able to move beyond rage and into a place of like joy and uh, celebration of who we are. Yeah, so um, how did you um, develop th the relationship between uh, joy and grace in the film? So um, that relationship uh, was pretty much inspired by myself and my mom. Mm -hmm. So uh, when my mom came to the UK, she was a cleaner for mm -hmm. and a nanny for a lot of uh, families. And uh, she would basically tell me about all the kind of strange dynamics that a... Um, you know, um, be, you know th th being a nanny in a home of a white family would, would bring, which is often filled with these really strange microaggressions and nuances that were kind of hard to put down. And also, um, you know, as I got older, um, you know, my dad worked in a restaurant full time and uh, uh, there was no one to really look after me at home. So my mom brought me along to her cleaning jobs. So, um, you know, I, I, I really kind of got to see the interior of a lot of like baronesses' homes, mm -hmm. you know, actors' homes. Um, and um, yeah, I just kind of got to see how my mom, you know, kind of cleaned other people's homes. And um, yeah, the, the relationship was very much based off of how I used to be so naughty in other people's houses and where I wasn't supposed to be. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I knew that it, it, it needed a place within uh, the film. Yeah, so actually I'll probably go into that now. So um, mm. how, how would you say Raging Craze addresses like the hypocrisy of these immigrants being relied upon by the elite for service jobs? <laughs> mm. That's a really good question. I mean, you know, there are so many POCs, specifically Southeast Asians, mm even more specifically Filipinos who um, they are such a big part of service industry mm -hmm. uh, you know the nursing industry care industry cleaning industry nanny industry um, and I always felt like they were almost an invisible part of society but served as a pillar of society in so many ways um, and yet you know we we're hardly seen, we're hardly represented. And I think, strangely enough, it's it's kind of a, a, this strange double-edged sword of wanting to be hidden, and but also never being recognized for the sort of sacrifices and hard work that we do. And um, I wanted to dedicate this film to 
to those people, especially people like my mom. You know, during the pandemic, both in the US and the UK, I can speak very specifically to the UK, the, the, a lot of the NHS workers were Filipino. And for whatever reason, they were the ones dying in, the, in droves. And um, I just thought that was just an insane injustice, you know, for the effort, the sacrifice that goes into protecting, uh, you know, uh, the British people. And um, you, you, and yet at the same time, we were um, experiencing a lot of Asian hate. So uh, it felt like something I needed to explore in the film, but not make it the true focal point. I need it it's something that people could see and recognize, but, um, uh, y you know, like not put, shove it in people's faces. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm not sure. Did that answer the question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah? Okay. Well, okay. Okay. well you, you already mentioned um, Get Out, so what are some of your other, like, influences for the horror of the film? <laughs> for the horror of the film? Okay, this might surprise you, but... Um, one of the main ones is Danny DeVito's Matilda. <laughs> I watched this when I was a kid, and um, and I used to watch a lot of horror films, mm. but for whatever reason, um, that one really scared the shit out of me. Mm -hmm. Very particularly the scene where Matilda and Miss Honey are trying to escape from um, Miss Trunchbull's house. Mm -hmm. I still watch it today because I feel like that sequence is like a masterclass in mm -hmm. tension building, and. Um, so that was one of them. Uh, but another one is a, a very specific pick. It's Bong Joon-ho's uh, Shaking Tokyo. It was a short mm. film that he did. Phenomenal. It's like you're watching someone who's at the height of their powers. Um, just very considered shots, very considered storytelling, and in such a short period of time. And uh, that really influenced the way that um, we shot Raging Grace, because we had such little money mm -hmm. I knew I needed to be able to tell lots of uh, story in singular shots um, and um, you know that used uh, you know very economic techniques to achieve it um, what should I say oh yeah um, uh, Fanny and Alexander like tonally was one of those films uh, for me that just just completely blew me away. I had to make sure that while writing Raging Grace, I wasn't stealing from it too much. Um, and uh, yeah, I would say like those three films were such a big influence um, on the film. Oh gosh, you know, a whole raft of British films like The Servant, you know, with uh, Derek Go uh, Bogard. Um, uh, but yes, the, 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 those would be the main three ones that kind of, uh, yeah left its imprint on me yeah, yeah so I don't, I don't want to get too much into the revelations later in the film, but um what, what what type of journey do you hope audiences go on <laughs> that's a great question i mean you know as i said earlier first and foremost i want people to be entertained mm -hmm. when they watch this film i became very acutely aware of the type of films that came out post get out um, they were very important because, you know, there was so much trauma and anger that needed to be expressed. But what I was worried about was that it wasn't giving audiences and us as viewers uh, a chance to move beyond the aggression and the violence. Uh, and I felt like so many of us were walking away feeling very fatigued. Um, and I was worried that there was still so much to say and I didn't want audiences to feel tired when it came to telling more stories about, you know, POCs and their experiences. So uh, I wrote it for two audiences. One, the ones that I would hope would just have a great time mm. watching something that would take them on, <clears throat> you know, a journey that they've never quite seen before in a very uh, familiar kind of uh, genre. Secondly, I wanted it, I wanted my intended audience, which was, you know, uh, East and Southeast Asians or Asian Americans or, you know, do you know what, it doesn't even matter if they're Asian, it really is just about people who wanted to belong, who wanted to be, to felt like they were worthy of belonging and wanted to break past 
maybe like the lessons they were taught to, to feel hidden to you know just to get good grades and uh, and be the good asian or be the good immigrant um and to, you know to let them know that they can be whatever they want wherever they want and uh home is wherever they decide to put their uh, place their hat and um truly i wanted people to walk away just feeling like it was essentially a celebration you know as much as there is trauma and horror in this thing it's also about joy you know and walking away feeling like i just set a light yeah that's a good note to end on <laughs>